Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, Jake, after two weeks, talked to Chase and talked about how much of the offense you've already installed. And can you kind of talk about the pace of that over the first two weeks? Yeah, you know, we put in overall probably about got to have 80% of the offense in right now. And we're moving at a decent pace right now. It's not as fast as I would like it to be, but, you know, that's kind of expected from your first two two weeks of installation. And, you know, the more we're going to rep it, the more they're going to come familiar with it and the faster we're going to play. But so far, I'm very pleased with how they've uh, just adapted to the whole. There's a lot of similarities, but they've adapted well to the tempo. But you can tell that they're just going to keep learning and keep getting better at it. When you're in this situation with a new offensive coordinator, the top six receivers are gone, the top quarterback's gone, you got all new faces in there. How critical is this time of year? I think it's huge, but it's like I've said to the team, I think it's great for everybody. It's a fresh new start. There's a clean slate. You know, I don't have any previous opinions of these guys. So, you know, it, it's really what Coach Dykes has always said. It's the next man up. So, like, I think there's a lot of excitement from, from that standpoint where these guys are out there just all competing and try to, trying to, to see who are the 11 guys that we're going to put on the field next year. Of uh, of the well five now four with with Ross not here today but uh, <laughs> which which of those guys uh, what stood out about each of those guys to you over the first six days you know they're all pretty similar right now um, you know a lot is the learning curve you know they, some guys you know get some some parts of the scheme and some guys don't but you know right now I think uh, it, they all bring something different to the game. Um, and, the, and you can kind of see that when we scrimmaged on Wednesday you know some guys. Uh, uh, I give a lot of freedom to the quarterbacks, and some guys are the guys that are going to go deep with the ball a lot of times, and some are going to take the conservative throws and just try to march them down. So, you know, I, I, th I think it's going to be a great competition with all of them. We're going to have to start cutting it down here pretty soon so we can start building continuity with uh, the guys that we think are going to be the ones that are going to compete for the job next year. And then some are going to run because we saw Gilliam make things a little interesting with his legs <laughs> there late. Is he kind of is he someone you kind of have to give a second look to, even though he's as young as he is? Yeah, you know, I think uh, what I've always done with the quarterbacks in the past is I give them a fair opportunity to compete. You know, after Johnny won the Heisman, I let Kenny Hill compete just to see that if, if you know, if he had any uh, capability of running the offense, which, you know, probably in reality he wasn't going to be a job, mm -hmm. uh, get the job. But, uh, you know, I think it's a good opportunity, a fresh slate for all of them to go out there and compete. And, again, like, I think you, you find the guy that's going to move the ball the best and you adapt the offense around it. You know, you, you talked about how Max can run the ball a little bit. So, you know, if, if, if he can it, be efficient that way, then you're probably going to see a little more quarterback run game with him. Ross noted that before he went down with, the, with whatever he went down with, is that, that the tempo of practice seems to be a lot quicker, and we're noticing that. As soon as one guy releases the ball, then the next guy takes the snap is that a function of having so many guys that you have to get through is that something that's kind of a trademark it, I, th I think that's a lot about player development it's just something that we've done in the system for a long time and, and it's all about reps I think that if you throw guys out there and rep them and rep them and rep them you're eventually going to get make it muscle memory and those guys are going to be pretty efficient with what they do so you know it, it, it's it's also gives uh, the opportunities for the to build depth and you know you're going to put your starters out there, but you know if one guy goes down, you got to be able to put a guy in that knows what he's doing and can and keep the thing running when when it's not going the way you want it to. Last year, Billy McCrary didn't have much to. I mean, he, he was on defense, but he didn't do a heck of a lot. You had no idea what he was about, and then you get him, and now he's doing quite a bit. What have you? Th what do you thought of his performance? You know, I, I've actually I recruited Billy for a while when I was in at Texas A&M, so I'm pretty familiar with his uh, skill set. And you know, he he was a quarterback in high school, and and was very athletic. And you know, he's just one of those dynamic guys that is, that you know that he's a good player, but where does he fit? And I think just over the past year, you know, he, he's been playing all these different positions where I think we we kind of found a spot that he's going to be comfortable with. Did uh, did the decision to move him to offense come before you were before you got here? Uh, yeah, it was in the transition of it. I think they discussed it over the bowl prep, um, you know, and, and I was completely fine with it because, uh, you know, I was recruiting him mm -hmm. as, as an athlete. Um, you know, he's very talented. He ran a 4 4 or camp at Texas A&M, so I, I thought that was, uh, you know, if a guy can run that fast, you can put him somewhere on the field. <laughs> what do you want to see out of the, the second half, or the second two-thirds, rather, of spring practice? What do you want to see out of your offense? I, I want to eliminate mental mistakes. You know, and that's the thing for that we've done for the past two weeks is there's been a lot of mental uh, mental busts. You know, for example, you know when you see Max run, that that wasn't a designed <laughs> run play for him. But you know that happens. You know, and that's just uh, just part of the repetition part of it. But you know, once we can play at a fast pace and eliminate mental mistakes, I think it's going to come second nature to the guys. 
uh, the offensive line, what do you make of the, the competition there? Obviously, you bring back four out of your five, but mm, some right. shuffling around. And I think Coach Jones does a great job with those guys. And again, he, he shuffles them around. And he keeps it a close competition at all times where, you know, everybody's playing for their job every single snap. So again, that also goes back to building depth, you know, and he's moving people around. They're playing all different positions. You're seeing guards play tackles and centers and they're just moving all around. So, you know, when you, when you look at it, when an offensive lineman goes down, you got to put your next best guy in and then shuffle them around. Just to fit accordingly. Receivers, who's been the most pleasant surprise? You think? Man, there, there's a lot of them. They are, a lot have been jumping off the, uh, off the tape right now. But you know, Singleton and, and Chad and and you know Bankhead and Mel Quisi, they, they're doing some good things out there. You know, even Ray. Ray's been doing a good job. I'm excited. I think we've got a lot of depth at that position. And um, again, they're they're different types of, of guys. You know, you've you know you, when you when you think of Ray and. Uh, and like Bankhead playing the exact same spot, you know, like they're just two different body types, which, you know, I think you can get creative from a, a play calling standpoint when, when you have that, that, those different types of bodies there. Finally, pro day, obviously Johnny had a big one uh, <laughs> when you were there. How does this compare? No, this is huge, you know, especially with the national exposure, you know, NFL network out here and just, uh, you know, you see some head coaches walking around and, uh, you know, every team represented here. So I, I, that's a huge deal. It's a great deal for the university and it kind of shows what what those guys did here. And, and you know, when you when you send five guys to the combine and, you know, you, it, it shows that the atmosphere that they can have here that they come for the pro day. It's just it's pretty neat that they can do that. Any pangs of jealousy going, oh, these are the guys I don't get to use. I know. You said, well, actually, that's the first time I got to see Jared throw live, and, and it, it just looks natural to him. And uh, and those receivers, you know, I was starting to ask questions. I was like, what number was that kid? You know, just to figure it out because it's a it's a, a pretty good group of guys that uh, you can tell that they had some fun. They moved the ball well last year. Changing topic real quick with uh, – I'm sure you've got a lot of video to watch over the break, but oh, yeah. between spring break and daylight savings, are you going to get a chance to see a little bit of the Bay Area at all this week? I'm going to try to, for sure. I'm going to catch up on sleep at the first part and then uh, get get this tape kind of knocked out and kind of get ahead for the next week. And then hopefully by the end of next week, I'm going to be able to to spend some time around the area. I've had over 100 suggestions of where to go, so I'm just going to kind of hang out with my wife and figure out and just kind of go explore this area. Thanks. All right, appreciate it.